Hi, I'm Ethan, and this video is an introduction to Effect, a TypeScript library to help developers easily create the complex applications of today and tomorrow. We are stuck with JavaScript and all of its quirks, whether we like it or not. TypeScript has been a really big step, but the primitives it's built on are still fundamentally flawed. It's time to build with a library designed to handle the complexity of modern development. How often have you seen this kind of code? What problems might there be here? The biggest problem is that this function could crash your program, but doesn't feel the need to tell you. Unsafe assumptions crash our programs at runtime and wake us up at 4 a.m. Handling these cases properly in vanilla TypeScript is less than ideal. What if you forget to try catch? What if you forget one of the possible errors? This is exactly as unsafe as the original function, but the three places it can crash are now explicitly stated. If you want it to never crash, you find alternatives for those or dies. Here's what a verbose version of that might look like. I know this may seem like a lot, but this is mostly caused by having to work around existing APIs that are designed around try-catch. It takes a bit of work at the weeds, but once you're into the effect world, things become much easier. An idiomatic effect solution looks like this. Don't worry too much about the specifics here. We'll talk about the basic effect types and functions soon. I just wanted to give you a taste. The love-hate relationship with JavaScript is something most developers share. You can't seem to escape it. The language has grown a lot, with new modern features and TypeScript making development surprisingly pleasant, but the pain points are still there. Effect brings TypeScript up another level, providing powerful primitives to make writing safe, asynchronous, resourceful, composable, concurrent, and observable programs easier than ever before. Let's start with type safety. What's the problem with these two types? They're only generic over one parameter. TypeScript gives us the illusion of safety, but once things go off the happy path, you're left completely in the dark. I am here to tell you that it doesn't have to be that way. The effect type is the core of the entire effect ecosystem. Although their actual implementation is a bit more complex, it can be helpful to think of an effect as a function that takes in its requirements as arguments and returns either a value or an error. Now, back to JavaScript for just a quick moment. Asynchronous code is everywhere in modern apps, but the promise primitive leaves a lot to be desired. Promises are eagerly executed, meaning they begin execution immediately on creation. This means that they can never be used to represent a computation, only an already running computation that might have already completed and produced a value. Also, the value produced by a promise is implicitly memoized, meaning that when the promise is settled, the internal state of the promise is frozen and can't be changed anymore, whether the promise is fulfilled or rejected. Consequently, if you want to run the same computation again, you'll need to recreate the entire promise from scratch. Effects aren't like this. The effect data type represents an immutable value that lazily describes a workflow or a job, and all effect functions produce new effect values. Effect values don't actually do anything. They are just values that model or describe effectful interactions. An effect can be interpreted by the effect runtime system into effectful interactions with the external world. If you're like me, your mind is probably racing with possibilities at this point. I'm now going to give you an intentionally very quick tour of some of the things that the effect ecosystem offers. Although you're more than welcome to pause on each slide to try and understand what's going on, don't get too caught up in the specifics. I'll go into more depth in future videos. Just try to get an idea of what's possible. Now that errors are in their own dedicated channel and clearly separated by type, it becomes trivial to handle errors case by case, all at once, or to let them bubble up to the next effect. What's wrong with this snippet? Well, nothing, until you want to swap your live database client for a local test one. Sure, we could go full functional programming and pass every possible dependency as an argument, but that quickly becomes unrealistic. Effect provides a better way. In effect, a tag is a placeholder for a dependency of some type. We can use the tag just as if it was the actual implemented object in our effects without ever actually implementing it. Doing so causes that type to appear in the requirements field of the resulting effect. This tells the effect runtime that you must provide an implementation that matches the defined type before the program can be run. This can be done flexibly, anywhere in your program, meaning it becomes simple to swap out the implementation of a dependency when required. Modern apps are complex, often involving complex dependency hierarchies. To account for this, effect provides layer, a type describing the blueprint for the construction of a set of requirements. It takes some requirements in, 
may produce some error and yield some requirements out. Resources in our application may require lifetime-related logic. The scope data type is fundamental for managing resources safely and in a composable manner in effect. In simple terms, a scope represents the lifetime of one or more resources. When a scope is closed, the resources associated with it are guaranteed to be released. Modern applications require observability for us to know what's going on inside them. Effect provides powerful logging capabilities with different levels such as debug, info, warning, and error, as well as the ability to provide a custom logger that can do more than just a simple console.log. Effect provides a powerful and composable scheduling toolkit for when you want to run an effect more than just once. Have you ever tried implementing jittered exponential backoff? If you were to try to implement this snippet without effect, how would you do it? Would it be as flexible or as maintainable? This code works while your meager startup only has five users. But what about when it grows to hundreds or thousands? That many requests at once will crash your users' devices. And remember, promises are eagerly executed. So we'll need to design a complicated async queue with batching and interruption to enforce a level of parallelism. Or we could use effect. It really is this easy. Effect's fiber-based runtime manages everything for you. Lightweight threads of execution called fibers power Effect's runtime. Think of a fiber as a worker that performs a specific job. It can be started, paused, resumed, and even interrupted. Effect also seamlessly integrates with existing interruption APIs such as a port controller. Working with fibers directly is a pretty advanced use case you probably won't need for a while when starting out. Application code in TypeScript often solves the same problems over and over again. Effect provides a rich ecosystem of libraries that provide standardized solutions to many of these problems. You can use these libraries to build your application, or you can use them to build your own libraries. However, Effect understands it's not always realistic to rewrite your entire application. By now, you might have thought back to other projects aimed at doing TypeScript better, or even other programming languages, the majority of which ultimately fall to the same fate a lack of easy interrupt with a vast and unavoidable existing JavaScript ecosystem. Not effect. While it would be awesome to write applications that are effect all the way down, you can just start with the pieces of the ecosystem that make the most sense for the problems you are solving. Do you just want to rewrite a single endpoint that does some complicated parallel asynchronous work or has some particularly nasty error handling? You can do it with effect today. Do you just want to take advantage of one of effect's useful data structures? you can do it with Effect today. However, as more and more of your code base is using Effect, you will probably find yourself wanting to utilize even more of the ecosystem. And lastly, if you think you could get out of using Effect because functional programming is too different and too difficult, think again. Effect has its own form of async await style syntax powered by generators. With generators, you can write effectful code in the imperative way that you already know. Effect's concepts may be new to you, and may not completely make sense at first. This is totally normal. Learning Effect is a lot of fun. Many developers in the Effect ecosystem are using Effect today to solve real problems in their day-to-day -day work, as well as experimenting with cutting edge ideas for pushing TypeScript to be the most useful language it can be. I hope you feel inspired to give the Effect documentation a read and to explore the Effect repositories and API reference pages. Consider joining the Effect Discord server, a great community for learning and discussing Effect. Links to all of that, as well as the transcript and markdown source code to this video are available in the description, and corrections will be in the pinned comment. Finally, a huge thank you and shout out to No Boilerplate, to whom this video takes very strong inspiration from. His videos are incredible and inspired my passion for Rust, just like I hope this video will inspire your passion for effect. Please check out his channel, the link is also in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.